Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis, thank you all for stopping by to watch. So what are you gonna do someday when you don't have the internet? I mean, can you imagine a world, once again, without the internet? And before you all start jumping up and cheering and saying, yeah, that'd be the greatest thing in the world, that's what I'm hoping for, um, we should actually stop for a moment and realize how connected we are to the internet. Whether we wanna like, you know, agree with that or not, it's true. And there should be some preparations made in our lives uh, to, to live without it, to exist without it. Uh, because I, I think the possibility of that happening could uh, be within our lifetime. Not necessarily the possibility of it crashing, which that is a possibility, or the possibility of a grid down scenario. But the possibility, the more real possibility that it's just no longer safe uh, for folks like you and I to be part of it. Uh, and that's something I wanna talk to you about today and and hopefully encourage you and kinda get the, the gears moving in your head of, of ways that you can prepare for, for that uh, time happening in your life. Before I get started, just want to mention something that uh, is while you're in your preparedness mode and you're you're gathering your the things that you need and, and the food that you need which everyone should be uh, when you get to the point that you're ready to to look into long-term emergency freeze-dried food it's more expensive than your normal food but the stuff has a 20 to 30 year shelf life it's really convenient it's easy um, it's great for immediate emergencies because all you have to do is just you know heat it with some hot water and, and you have food and it's it's shelf stable for a very long time when you get to that point uh you might take a look at my patriot supply uh and uh preparewithtravis.com if you go to preparewithtravis.com uh, you'll see some uh, really good deals uh, you can buy this stuff packaged up in three month supplies one month supplies six month supplies uh, or or just individually, whatever you would like. Uh, My Patriot Supply is one of the best out there and they're, they're still maintaining on keeping up with their orders and, and the prices just haven't gone up crazy amounts like some places have because uh, of inflation. So My Patriot Supply, uh, preparewithtravis.com and, and you can find some pretty good deals there if you're interested. Okay, so I know a lot of you probably kind of feel like I do man I just I just soon it never existed yeah we're on here now I'm uploading videos you're watching videos uh, everyone at some level has a connection to the internet um, but what do we do when it no longer exists or it's just no longer safe for us to be on it's almost getting to that point I mean you can't really consider yourself being in a free society any longer when you have to have to self uh, monitor the things that you say, uh, when you when you risk being uh, censored, when you risk being removed and banned, or when you risk having someone come knock at your door simply because of something that you said, because you didn't agree with something, or because you're trying to spread uh, some fact or uh, or truth uh, on the internet, you can't really consider yourself living in a free society. So we're definitely already going down that path. Uh, and it's it easily could get to the point to where it's just no longer safe. I mean, it's certainly no longer safe on major platforms like Twitter and, and Facebook anymore. They're monitoring everything you do. Uh, there may be certain uh, places online that's a little bit more safe, but no place is safe uh, if you're on the internet. And so at some point, uh, we may have to make a choice to completely sever that tie. And the question is, will you be ready when that happens? Uh, one of the first things that comes to mind is the connections with family. I hear it all the time. You know, I, I really hate being on Facebook. I really, I really want to get off of Facebook, but that's where all my family's at. That's the only way that I can keep up with my kids and my grandkids and my cousins and aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews and, and people I went to, to school with 30 years ago and all this. It's the only way to keep up with them. You know, people don't send pictures anymore. People don't visit anymore. People, people don't do anything anymore other than post on Facebook. And that's just the only way that I can keep up with them. Um, and and the, the more and more that we become um, separated in a society and closed off and, and, and isolated, the more that places like Facebook are gonna be used. Uh, because I mean, look, look at this here, and I'm, I don't wanna talk about it too much because again, the censors don't like this kind of conversation. Um, now this is a recent poll 
I get it. Poles are usually not very accurate. Um, poles can, you know, be slanted one way or the other to, to prove a certain position. Um, but even if this isn't completely accurate, I do believe that there's probably some accuracy here. That around two thirds of the American population said that family members that don't have this are no longer welcome for the holidays. They're, they're, they're not inviting them, they're cutting them off, they're, they're not gonna be allowed to come around. Two thirds, two thirds, 60 to 65%, depending on if you read in the article, there was actually a couple of different polls and they both, they came in somewhere between 60 and 65%. Uh, so already we're seeing that. And we've been seeing this for a while where, you know, parents aren't letting their kids around grandparents or vice versa. Um, we're seeing uh, co-workers and friends and stuff not associate with each other because you don't have this or because you do have that. Uh, w w this is a, a growing problem. And right now, the only solution to it is, is well, we have the internet. You know, you can do uh, live Zoom calls and FaceTiming and, and posting pictures and sharing information and stuff online. Well, what happens when you can't do that anymore? What happens when you can't just easily text someone uh, or send them a message or whatever online? Are you capable of getting a hold of them? Do you know how to get a hold of them? Um, if your phone doesn't work, uh, do, you, do you have the phone numbers memorized? Do you have their address memorized? Uh, people don't even do that anymore. They don't, they don't hardly even know their own address because everything's GPS and you just send a, a location of where you're at and you just drive and follow the directions on the GPS to that location. But do you actually know the address? Do you know how to get there with that GPS and, and with that, uh, the drive assistance and everything? Um, so being able to connect and keep those connections with friends and families uh, could become very difficult for a lot of people if they did not have the internet and the technology around it because we're so connected with that. And so there's one example right there. Uh, how well are you uh, equipped to, uh, to, to exist and have connections and maintain connections with family and friends and loved ones without the internet and technology? Uh, one thing that I've started doing, and I, I've not done it as as consistent and diligent as I need to, but it is something that I've been doing. I actually bought uh, several months ago, nothing fancy, uh, but an address book, you know, the old style address books. Yeah, they still actually make them, it's amazing. Uh, and I bought a pretty good size one and I've started putting in there uh, contact information of friends and family. What's their address? What's their phone number? Uh, how to get a hold of them other than the, the internet and put that, that in there so that if something happens, uh, this, is, this is how we get a hold of them. Uh, put directions in there. Now, a lot of these people I know, you know, like I know how to get to my mom's house. I could probably walk there in my sleep. Um, but some people you may not. Uh, and so I've, I've tried to put that and create a hard copy uh, of how to get a hold of these people the best way that I know how. Uh, that way, if sometime I had no internet or I had no electricity, uh, that way I at least uh, can kind of have a good idea. And of course, you know, this conversation about the internet and, and where people are, you have to also include maps. Um, if you don't have physical maps, then then you're going to be hurting. It's very possible. Um, I have I have several. I have a big, big atlas, you know, the big kind, you know, they're like this big. I have a smaller atlas. I have a few small maps, uh, you know, like the state that I live in and, you know, border states. And then I've actually uh, been able to find maps that are, you know, break it down even more. So I have a map of kind of this area. It includes about a four or five county area um, of where I'm at, but they're much more detailed because obviously, you know, it's a lot bigger. It's zoomed in more basically. Uh, so you need that kind of stuff because we're so highly dependent upon, upon you know, the internet and GPS and all that. Uh, what happens when it goes away? Other things, financial. I mean, <laughs> my goodness, the whole financial world would, would, would just come to a crashing halt. Um, is that the only way that you have access to your funds is through the internet? Um, I, obviously, if it's in banks, that's one thing, uh, but most people access it through the internet. Um, 
is that the only way that you access uh, a lot of serious, you know, very in critical information, medical information? Do you have backup hard copies of, of assets? Do you have backup hard copies uh, of medical information, of, of very important information? A lot of people, they keep everything digital anymore. Uh, everything is digital. You know, they have all these cloud drives and, and, and stuff like that, and they keep everything on it. Do you actually have physical hard copy backups of everything? Because someday if the internet didn't exist and everything that proves that you are who you are, that you own what you do or anything like that is on the internet, it could all go away like that. Uh, so make sure that you have that kind of stuff, backups, hard copies. Another one, and I've mentioned this one before, um, just knowledge, general knowledge. I am old enough that I remember going to a library and looking up books. I'm old enough that I remember going to a library and using the index card systems to actually look for things. Um, I remember when they first started having computers at the, the small little library in the town uh, near where uh, I grew up. And they were the very old, old fashioned books, uh, old fashioned computers that were, you know, not super user friendly. Um, you know, black screen with the little green uh, letters. Nowadays, we don't even go to the libraries anymore. It amazes me that libraries still exist uh, because so many people, um, they don't use physical books. Everything's ebooks or everything is just looked up online. Um, I think it's Elon Musk that has said this before, that college degrees are pretty much worthless anymore or a waste of your time because everything you learn in a college, you can learn from just, you know, being online. He's probably correct in that. Uh, but the point is, is that all the information that everyone has nowadays, it's all on the internet. Um, you're looking up recipes. You're looking up how to do stuff. I do it all the time. You know, if I'm working on the truck and I'm doing something that I can't figure out how to do, you know what I do? I look it up. I look it up and I find a video or something like that and I figure out how to do it. And it's a convenient. It really is. There's a huge convenience level there of learning how to do stuff. If you have a, a, a sheep or a goat or a cow or something that's become lame and ill and you can't figure out what's wrong with it or how to treat it, you can look it up online and in a few minutes you've figured it out and, and probably have um, pretty close to the level of, of knowledge you'd get from a, from a veterinary. But what happens when that all disappears? You need to have hard copy stuff. You need to have physical books. I've, I've advocated for this ever since I started this channel. Um, if, if, you're, if you're completely dependent upon the internet for your information, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Um, one of the things that we did around here, and I've talked about it long ago in another video, um, is we have made the investment, partly because we also homeschool, but we've made the investment of purchasing a, a high volume printer. Uh, so instead of putting those little ink cartridges, you know, that you can print 50 pages and then they run dry and you have to spend a lot of money to buy a new one, we spent a little bit more and bought a printer that you feel like, like the little tanks and it lasts much longer. In the long term, it's way, way, way cheaper uh, to print. And so uh, we print a lot of stuff. Um, you know, we print a lot of stuff for homeschooling. Uh, we print information if I come across PDFs. There's a lot of great books uh, that involve the whole realm of survival and prepping and homesteading and self-sufficiency and all that kind of stuff that you can find the entire books in PDF for free online. It's free. Uh, and so when there's a really good one, one that I feel that is useful, I print it off. And, and usually for probably less than a dollar or two, I can print the entire book off. Uh, so there, there's an options like that. Uh, and then also having the actual real books, but make sure that you do more than just have them on a cloud drive or even on like a little memory stick or something like that uh, because that's still dependent upon technology to access that and the internet could crash and all technology could could you know fail not work um, it's not a highly dependent system and so you need to have backups and contingency plans for if that stuff doesn't work you also need to have backups and contingency plans as if the, the internet and technology is still there, but like I said, it's no longer safe. Um, you know, that's, that's another thing to look at. Uh, it still works. 
you know, you can access it whenever you want. It functions just like it does now, but it's become so intrusive. So, you know, so big brother that we just have to completely sever the tie to the internet. Uh, and so we, we should also be considering uh, our backups and what we're going to do with that, how we're going to communicate with the other, each other, how we're going to handle finances. Um, these are real problems that I think the, the possibility of us actually facing these problems in, over the next few years is, I think, greatly increasing. Uh, this isn't something that we just sit around and, and talk about in a hypothetical way. Uh, we are headed down that path. Now, how far down that path we will go, no one yet knows. But most certainly, we are headed down that path. Uh, of it being very dangerous for us to being to even being on the internet, being exposed to the internet. Uh, so, I think it's a very good idea to sit down. If you're married, sit down with your spouse, have this conversation. W what would happen if the internet just ceased to exist? You know, if it, it just doesn't exist anymore, how would we get a hold of your mom? How would we, you know, keep track of the kids, uh, you know, their their medical records or or anything? You know, if everything is on the internet, if everything's stored on some cloud, or you're getting all your information off the internet, or that's the only way you have of communicating with people, then how are you going to do that if you no longer have access to the internet? So as much as many of us would love to see the internet go away. Um, I would argue that probably a lot of us are not really as prepared as we think we are for that day that it does go away. Uh, so with all the stuff that's going on, and there's a lot, um, I think you should be making these plans and, and, and these preparations because as, as, as we continue down this this downward spiral that we're in with our society collapsing uh, all around us um, our dependence upon the internet is it's actually pretty dangerous uh, it's kind of scary and so we really need to address that and with each of our lives and and figure out what ways we need to change and what we need to do so that when it all comes crashing down uh, we're not going to be left in such a, a desolate position and desperate position uh, because because it's, you know, been ripped right out from underneath our feet. All right, folks. Thank you all for watching. Catch you in the next video.